Hey everybody, so I am back with another video. I know it's been a while since I made one, I've been quite busy with a lot of stuff in my life, but this video is going to be on protozoan infection and how to cure it. I think this video is going to be very useful for many of you because this disease is actually really common in many bettas. I've seen quite a bit of social media posts about these kind of disease, where people are kind of misidentifying it or giving the wrong advice. The worst part about protozoan infection is that it kills fish pretty damn fast. So I'm going to share with you guys how I deal with these kind of infections and how to identify it. But before we start, there are two protozoan disease that I cannot cover in this section. And that's mainly because they have a unique lifestyle that requires a specific kind of treatment. And those two diseases are velvet and ick. Protozoans refer to single cell organisms that are very diverse and broad. Though most of them are harmless, like paramecium, a lot of them causes disease in many different types of animals, and that includes humans too. There are six major types of protozoan infection in fish, five of them are easily identifiable, and one of them is actually an internal infection. But I'll save that one for last, because currently there's actually no cure for this type of disease. Two of the disease, ick and velvet, require special treatment, so they will not be discussed in this video. The other three are epistylus which is currently infecting the fish in the video, Costia disease, and Tetrahymena. These three diseases share a common trait, and that is white-like growth on the body of the fish. These growths can manifest itself as flaky or scaly-like white substances, white blisters that looks a lot like ick, or a slimy film that covers the fish. They also all kind of look the same, and they can occur together. Some of the symptoms include twitchy movements, difficulty breathing, and lethargy. Luckily, the treatment for all three of these diseases are the same. Alright, so let's get straight into how to treat it. By the way, if you're curious to know how I figured this out, protozoan infections are a pretty important disease for many US fisheries. And thus, there's actually tons of studies on how to control them. The first thing you need to do is get yourself some formalin, 37% concentration with 15% methanol. It's important that you get the one with the methanol because methanol stabilizes formalin in the water. I have a link in the description where you can get the specific one that I use. Formalin is a disinfectant that's widely used in fisheries to control protozoan infections. It is a pretty toxic chemical, but it's not as bad as people make it out to be. As long as you keep it at a specific concentration, your fish will be relatively fine. The goal is to make it toxic enough to kill the protozoan, but not your fish. Fisheries actually have a permanent concentration of formalin in the water when they're rearing their fries. So when done right, it is okay. By now, you should have isolated your fish. Here, I have a beta bellica that has been infected and is being isolated in a 2.5 gallon tank. Okay, so the first thing you do is you're gonna carefully measure out using a milliliter syringe the correct amount for the amount of water your fish is in. I use a simple milliliter syringe and you wanna be careful because this stuff is uh, pretty damn toxic. You're gonna be dosing this daily, but for your first dose, it's gonna be a little higher. I like to put 0.2 milliliters of formalin in about one gallon of water but only for the first dose. Then you're gonna give it a good squirt inside the tank. Make sure you turn off the lights because lights demature the formalin. Okay, so some important thing you need to know, formalin is not that stable in water. So after about 12 hours in most aquarium water, it's no longer effective. So that means you have to dose this on a daily basis. Okay, so this is day number two, and as you can see, the fish is looking way better already. Its fins are a little more spread out, but if you look closely at the body, it still has some traces of the protozoan. If your fish is healthy enough, go ahead and feed it. Here, I am just giving him a little bit of bug bites. Looking at the way he eats, I can already tell that he's gonna be alright. Before you begin your second treatment, make sure you change the water. The reason is because formalin kills everything in the water, including bacteria, so the nitrates and the ammonia might spike. I recommend changing out about 50% of the water. Make sure that when you put in a new water, that it matches the parameters of your previous water, including acidity, pH, and temperature. From now on, you're gonna be dosing 0.1 milliliters per gallon of water. And this will be your daily dose from now on, after you do your water change, of course. After about four days, this is what the fish looks like. He's looking way better already. In fact, I think he's pretty much cured. Any of the flakiness you see in this video is probably just from the dead skin the fish has on the scales. I find that if you do everything properly, the fish should be cured of the protozoan infection within a week. I would personally still isolate the fish for another week, 
just in case there's any kind of lingering infection or parasites that's still alive in the water. Now that you understand how to cure protozoan infection, let's talk about why they occur. The number one cause of protozoan infection is stress. These protozoan exist naturally in the water in most tanks as part of the natural bio. When the fish is under stress, the immune system is lowered and it causes an outbreak. When an outbreak occurs, there's a higher concentration of these protozoan around and they become very aggressive and rapidly infect your fish or fishes and quickly kills them. Some of the causes of stress include overcrowding, rapid change in temperature. I find that this is the most common cause. Aggressions from other tank mates and generally poor water quality. Or it could be a combination of the above. And lastly, I want to talk about the protozoan infection, Cryptobia. This is an internal protozoan infection that doesn't really have a cure. In my personal opinion, I think it's one of the causes of muscle wasting disease in many betas. Muscle wasting disease is one of the diseases that I really have difficulty with treating because oftentimes the fish shows no outwardly symptoms, just being really emancipated and almost having his muscle wasted away, especially the muscle on the back. The fish can even be quite active and eats normally, but no matter what you do, it never seems to gain weight. Eventually, one day, it will just die. The best thing you can really do for Cryptobia is just try to keep him in a healthy environment with clean, warm water. Alright, so that's gonna be all for today, guys. I hope this video was very informative. Let me know what you guys think below. I left some links for some of the products I use. And feel free to suggest any kind of video you guys might like to see. Thanks for watching, guys.